Mark from ITCU Solutions, and today I want to go over how to configure a Aruba Instant On 1930 switch with the Aruba Instant On portal. Um, the way you do this is you go to the standard web page for Aruba Instant On when you're starting out. You go to 192.168.1.1, and from there it gives you a choice for local management or for simplicity at its best. We're going to do the for simplicity at its best and we're going to click on change network connectivity. And from here it lets you set up um, what IP address you want to use to manage your switch from. Now if you have DHP set up on your network it will pick this up automatically and you don't have to do this step. But we're going to set up a static IP so we're going to click static. And in our case we're going to change this to our IP address to the 10, 10 .15 uh, let's see, dot one dot two, and our gateway is going to be ten dot fifteen dot one dot one, and finally for our DNS, we're just going to use the four nines, so because it needs a way to resolve its way to find the Aruba Instant Portal, and the other thing is. I've tried changing the uplink VLAN to multiple VLANs and it works. And then I've disconnected disconnected it so it would go back to local management. I don't think this changing the VLAN here actually changes anything because the management VLAN is VLAN 1 and it can't be changed. So for this case, it does work if you change it on tag and have an un, and have a trunk across that has VLAN 1 on it. But this seems to cause a lot of problems. So I'm going to leave this as untagged. So we're just going to apply this and then we're going to pause the video because we're going to um, we're going to change the NIC card settings. Okay, we changed our NIC card to the 1015 network and you can see that up here in the address line that we are on the 1015.12 network and um, you can't really do any, I mean, you can come back and rechange things if you want, but this is all you're going to get because you're really setting up on the portal. So let me just show you what we're going to do. We're going to go to the portal and we're going to configure this switch just as a layer two. I'll go over some of the routing features when I'm done, but I just want to show you how to do a basic layer two setup. So what we're doing in this case is we actually have two Ethernet cables plugged between our Cisco router and the HP Instant On. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to treat the cloud management port, which is port 24, which is really just VLAN 1 here that's going up to our, uh, that's untagged up to our router so we can uh, take it however we want basically there. Um, but we're using this as out-of-band management, so the rest of this configuration won't affect it. So we need a separate trunk to handle our multiple VLANs. And so what I've done is I've plugged port 23 in as well to the Cisco router to another port on that router. So this way I can handle handle these trunks. Now in theory I could configure this on the portal as a router and do some of this from here. Um, but for this demonstration we're just going to set this up as a simple uh, layer 2 switch. And so what we're going to just do to do this is we're just going to go to the portal add the switch to inventory, change the host name basically, and create the VLANs. And that's effectively all we have to do to get it to work in this particular configuration. Because the cloud administration and all that stuff is already set up for you. Okay, so we're going to go to the portal now. And um, so the first thing we have to do at the portal is just add this switch to inventory. And to do that, we have it saved, the, the uh, serial number saved in a text file here. So we're just going to go in and click on Add Device here, and then search for my device, and can just copy our serial number in there of the switch, and hit Search for the device, and it found it. And then we're going to hit Add, and we're going to accept that. Okay, so this this will trigger your Aruba to start syncing. And if it was if it had connectivity to the portal before the Aruba hardware, and we're gonna click on give it a name here too, but the Aruba hardware, and we're gonna change it just to switch one.
But your Aruba hardware should have a cloud that was blinking red to green, red to green. That shows you have connectivity to the portal, but it also hasn't been added in inventory in sync yet. So I'm looking at it right now at the actual Aruba switch and it just now went, the cloud just went to a solid green and it stayed green. It's no longer going from orange to green. So I think with that, it should be synced up by now. So we're just gonna close this or save this real quick. And then we're gonna close it because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go add our networks, our VLANs on our, which they're calling networks here. But before I add them, since we're just using a standard wired 1930 Aruba, we're gonna go into the wireless and actually deactivate this. So we're gonna hit the arrow there next to the the name of our uh, site. And oh, it's already, it's already not activated. But if that was box was checked, since we're not using the wireless, we would deactivate that. Okay, so now we're just gonna add two VLANs. So we're gonna go up and add a VLAN. One for data, we'll just call it data and we're gonna call this VLAN three. And we're just gonna go in and save that real quick. And once that's saved, we're gonna go over to our network assignments. And you'll see that by default, it comes in and sets everything to a trunk, except for your management interface that connects back to the cloud. But since this is just gonna be our data, we want it all to be untagged. So we're just gonna click untagged except for our trunk port, which is v, which is port uh, 23. So we're gonna select tagged for that because that's actually gonna trunk VLAN five up the trunk for us. So this is all we have to do for that VLAN. It's very simple and straightforward. So we're just gonna hit save again. Okay, and now we're gonna add another one just for voice. And we're again, we're gonna select wire and this time we're gonna name it voice and we're gonna call it VLAN two and click on voice network. And what the voice network will do is if we have a phone that plugs in based on the first six uh, bytes of the MAC address, it will, if it sees a phone from a particular manufacturer, um, Polycom or whatever, if that matches the MAC address, it will throw it into this VLAN for us. Uh, there's obviously other ways you can get that VLAN, the phones, you can pre-configure the VLAN or other things you can do, but we're just showing you the standard way that Instant On would have you do this. Okay, so we're gonna hit save again since we've created the VLAN. But then I'm gonna go over to network assignments on this as well. But since this is a voice VLAN, we want everything to be tagged. So we don't really have to do anything. So now each port is we have a data VLAN on three, untagged, and a voice VLAN on two that is tagged, which is exactly what we want. And we don't have to touch the trunk here either because we want two also to be tagged on our trunk. I'm sorry, on our tagged all the VLANs tagged. I'm using the Cisco trunk uh, when it's really just an untagged link. I mean a tagged link, everything on it's tagged, which will act like a Cisco trunk. So that's all we have to do to set up those VLANs. It's, it's literally this simple. So we're gonna close this real quick. Okay. And I'm gonna go back to my inventory real quick here or, well, here's the picture. But right now you'll see the instant on. It's actually been already configured this way. VLAN two, VLAN three are configured. Um, our trunk on 23 is configured. Our uh, cloud management is configured on 24. Um, I'm gonna go back to the portal real quick here though, and go just to the inventory. And if you look at the device, if you go to the arrow next to the device, although you can't change anything here, you can go look at your ports, and you can see which ones are active. And you can see I don't have my trunk plugged in yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the trunk and I'm also gonna change my NIC because I wanna get on the 1022 network if I bring up my drawing again. Right now I'm on 1015 because I was using for management, but we're gonna change ourselves so we're that computer down at the bottom, the 122170. So give us a second, we're gonna pause the video again and uh, just to change that NIC IP. Okay, so we changed our NIC card again. And you can see that we're now that 10.22.170 that you see in the 
Visio here. <clears throat> and you can also see that uh, our trunk is now up as well, right here. So we're trunked, and so now we're plugged into one, we're going through this trunk out to the internet. So we're just gonna verify that our configuration works. And so we're just going to ping out to the internet and you can see it works fine. So that's all you have to do to configure this as a layer two switch. Um, it's a little confusing the way they do this where you have to go to network for VLANs, but if you actually want to configure stuff like routing or something like that, <clears throat> excuse me, oops, excuse me, or link aggravation, you actually do that under the inventory here. And um, if you want to set up routing, you come under inventory and you do it through connectivity. So let's say we want to add some routing, we have to click on allow routing and hit save. So what this is going to do is uh, make our device into a layer three device. And you can also see you can change your management stuff down here, which we won't be doing because it could cause us big problems. Um, so once you have your routing set up, oops, excuse me, I think it's under ports. Under ports, Wait a second, maybe it is back under the... Oh, it is back under connectivity. So, but you have to get, just get out of it, refresh it basically. So now you have, it's showing you that the management in uh, VLAN one is routable. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna just add um, an IP here to show you that you can also route this is just setting up a VIP, a virtual IP, on one of these interfaces. So I'm going to just type in here, let's see, so 10.15.2.1. So this is now my gateway for VLAN 2, or could be a gateway for VLAN 2 if I had phones. And I'm going to do the same. I'm actually using my gateway for data right now. So I'm gonna turn on allow routing, but I'm not going to use the actual gateway for this, of the Cisco router that you saw in the diagram, since we're just testing this out. And I'm just going to type in here, uh, let's see, so 10 dot two dot two dot 20. And basically I'm just making it a, a uh, interface in VLAN 3 that I can ping to. So I'm going to save that. And now that I have all the routing set up, just to go over here now to check these, I should be able to now ping since it's on the same um, well, hold on. I'm just going to type in here 10.2.2.20 and hit enter. Now, I'm just pinging that local VIP. Now, if I try to ping 10.15.2.1, See, I think it was 2.1 on the voice. It won't work because right now my gateway is not pointed to the uh, to the 10.2.2.20. So what I'm gonna do is just pause the video and change my gateway address real quick and show you that this will work as well. Just to show you how the routing works, that the routing itself works. So I'm just gonna pause. Okay, so I changed my gateway to 10.2.2.20 and you can now see that I can ping the uh, VIP on the voice interface 
with no problem. It's right there, but I'll ping it again. And the reason that is is because now there's those connected routes will show up. Now, I probably just broke my internet connection because I didn't put a default route in. So if we try to ping something on the internet, well, I'd be wrong. It still works. Um, so there, maybe it's automatically somehow defaulting out through that uh, VLAN one. But you can see that the routing works fine. You, you now have the connected routes uh, going through the machine. So you can set up as a layer three Okay, after I saw the ping still working uh, when I pinged out, pinged out to the internet, I just want to go over real quick on the drawing again what is probably going on. We added these VIPs here on VLAN, 1, VLAN 2 and 3, so my gateway now is 10.2.2.20. And since the cloud management here already has a default gateway effectively put in on the management on VLAN 1, um, now we're running, we can ping these two VLANs directly and they're just being routed effectively through a default route up through VLAN to, through the cloud management port. So in this case, if you're going to use this as a layer 3 switch instead of a layer 2 switch, it means we don't actually need this link up here anymore. We could completely um, delete this link. And so this you would no longer have to treat this as out-of-band management because your out-of-band management is now that single routable interface. So it's no different than, go than setting up a routed port on your standard router and then having your VIPs down here. So this would just be like a standard router port that forwards everything out. So this would be an alternative uh, setup if you wanted to treat this as a layer 3 switch where you don't need this extra cable you could just have this straight up cable but I would probably recommend if you're going to use the portal doing this one of two ways if you're going to treat this as a layer 2 do what I did have two separate connections treat one as a straight out out of band management and then have a separate trunk if you're going to do this routed where you have you set VIPs for your VLANs then you could get away with just having this single uplink interface because it's a router basically forwarding it up to your firewall or whatever you're doing. And uh, I hope, I just wanted to go over that real quick because I didn't realize this myself till I just watched those pings, that this would also be a good alternative. Um, I just want to go over what I believe would be your best alternatives for setting up stuff from the portal. And uh, I hope this was helpful. And let me know if you have any questions or comments or if you have a better way of doing this and also if someone knows how to change the management VLAN from VLAN 1, that would be great to know as well. I don't think it's possible, at least currently right now with the Instant On platform. But if someone does, um, I'd love to find out how you do it. Thank you.